So another broadleaf that you might see, and this is very common in gardens, you start tilling ground or even in these raised beds, you'll notice a spurge. Now this is prostrate spurge, also a broadleaf. It's an annual, tremendous seed producer. Uh, this is one that doesn't hand pull very well, even though it is an annual. Uh, the, it tends to break off and it comes right back from the stem. It's a tremendous seed producer, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it will germinate from a seed and about three weeks later, that plant that germinated from a seed in good growing conditions is able to start producing seeds. So you get a lot of turnover in a flower bed. You'll have a plant germinating, three weeks later it's producing seeds. You can get a lot of seed production occurring in your vegetable garden. So that's prostrate spurge. And this is hyssop spurge. Hyssop spurge is a tall growing plant, taller growing plant than the prostrate spurge. Uh, same characteristics, it's a tremendous seed producer as well. It's also an annual. But all of these spurges, when you break them open, they produce this milky sap that you'll see running out. Spurges produce this milky sap, an identifying characteristic is that sap that it produces. But this is one that doesn't really hand pull very well, so you got to really work at it to get it out of the soil. So we talked about weeds competing with your vegetable crops that you're growing, and uh, if you have a lot of weeds present, it's definitely going to hurt your yields. You're not going to yield as much. There's also potential for diseases and insects to go from weeds to your crop, your tomatoes or your butter beans, peas. Uh, and so we want to make sure we get rid of weeds. And so there's diff different methods for weed control. If you have a small garden, uh, one of the most practical things is to hand remove. And, and so you just take a weed and try to uproot it as best you can. It doesn't always work. It sometimes breaks off and you have to go back and get it again. Uh, but this is an annual. And with most annuals, you can hand remove them. Like this big weed is gone now. And I just usually get rid of it and throw it in a bag or something and just get rid of it. Something like a purple nut sedge, though, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't hand remove very well. You don't always get these tubers. Like I'm sure I left tubers in the soil that this plant's gonna come back from. Again, number one weed problem in the world you're probably not going to be able to just hand remove it and get rid of it. So hand removing is definitely an option. Now my research associate Dave Sexton is going to demonstrate another method and that's just hoeing it out. Again the ultimate goal with hoeing is to try to uproot the weeds and uh, chop around your plants and that also provides a little bit of oxygen to the, uh, to the system there when you do that. So uh, he's again trying to uproot the plants and then he's getting rid of it, and, uh, and it's a good method for weed control. And on a larger scale, uh, bigger gardens, hoeing is definitely an option for you. So another method of weed control is cultivation or tillage. And uh, till, the way a tiller works is similar to what the hoe is doing, is it uprooted, it's uprooting weeds. And, and Dave here is going to demonstrate how the tiller works and how it uproots, and some of the flaws to tilling and hoeing. So go ahead, Dave. So it does do a good job of loosening the soil. It uproots some of the annuals, but this was actually an area where we have Bermuda grass. And Bermuda grass is very hard to get rid of by tillage. In fact, we're chopping up this Bermuda grass, making smaller plants, and that will, will increase the problem. Now, so that's, that's something to consider when you're tilling. Uh, annuals really do till up pretty well, but something like a perennial, like a sedge, are not going to till up very well. I'm going to make new plants. Something like this chamber bitter seedling right here, you could actually uproot it and do a good job of killing it. So the tiller works pretty well on annual plants, but uh, with perennial plants it's not going to be as good, and that's when you might consider using another method of weed control uh, for a perennial plant, and we're going to talk about that next. So mulches can also be a very effective method of weed management. The way mulches work is they smother out weeds. You can put them on top of weeds and smother them out. And you can also, uh, it, some of these weed seed need light for germination and, and it kind of protects the uh, seed uh, from getting light. You'll also notice that you just have less germination overall uh, when you have uh, different kinds of mulches. And those mulches can be grass clippings or hay or pine bark media or, or pine straw. They work really well and they provide a barrier that really is kind of hard for weeds to come through. But there are certain weeds that will come right through it, like purple nut sedge. Again, the number one weed problem in the world has no problem finding its way through a mulch eventually. You'll get some temporary uh, control with a mulch, but weeds like purple nutsedge will come right through it. 
So mulches, again, are, are very, very effective at keeping weeds down, but you're gonna have a hard time with the perennial weeds like nutsedge and, and Bermuda grass, too. Bermuda grass is gonna find its way through the mulch. It's a, it's a crawling type plant, it's a perennial grass, highly invasive, loves the environment in the New Orleans area, hot, humid weather, it's native of Africa. It's gonna thrive in a raised bed like this or any other area it wants to grow. So this is just a perennial grass that's gonna come right through the mulch. But mulch is very effective. It holds moisture uh, pretty well around your plants and is also a barrier uh, that is difficult for weeds to grow through. So plastic mulch is also another way to manage weeds, and this is kind of gaining popularity now. We've had a lot of rain, and, and this area hasn't been planted yet, but you can see the, rain, the water standing here. But very simply, uh, you would come in, cut holes, and transplant your tomatoes or whatever it is you're going to be planting in these areas. But as you can see, this will be a very good barrier uh, to weeds. Uh, it will also hold moisture in. You'd run your drip tape and your fertilizer underneath. And uh, this is just a, a method that has gained popularity, but I tell you, you mentioned the number one weed problem in the world, purple nutsedge. That's the one weed that's gonna penetrate this plastic and come right through it. But overall, this is one of the best ways to cut down on weed pressure in a vegetable garden, plastic culture.